Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're actually going to be discussing the fair launch of Casper Coin. So I've seen some comments and some Twitter posts around this subject, how it's not fair launch because of the DAG Labs investment. And I just wanted to make a video on how the DAG Labs investment actually helped Casper Coin and why it is fair launched in a sense that none of the DAG Labs investors actually got like a pre-mine or a pre-allocation for Casper Coin. So if you don't know what DAG Labs is, it is basically the backbone of the development for Casper Coin. So as it says here, DAG Labs was formed as a university initiative with the help of this person and later these people, uh, Yonatan is mentioned there, raised roughly $8 million from a crypto VC called Polychain Capital, which became the initial DAG Labs funding. Needless to say, this was hardly a significant amount in terms of the crypto market in 2018. Now, a lot of cryptocurrency development is funded by other people. This is well known. Ethereum took funding at the very start as well. So it's not like out of the blue kind of thing where nobody is taking VC backing or anything like that or any funding. Tag Labs developed the codebase fork for BTCD full node codebase. The primary objective was keeping the design system as close to Bitcoin and the assumptions as possible. Proof of work, blocks, UTXO, transaction fees. The codebase underwent significant refactoring by the core devs, who adapted it to block DAG governed by the Ghost DAG protocol. Casper's birth was around the corner. This went on for, I believe, around three years before Casper Coin was actually released. And we'll look into that now on the wiki of Casper Coin. So there's a lot of questions. If you want, I'll leave links in the description below so you can see all of these and you can read through them. However, this is the main one that we're talking about here. How much Casper does DAG Labs or Polychain Capital have? It says here less than 3% of the total supply, so 840 million Casper coin. Now, this wasn't a pre-allocation. I want to make that very clear. It was after the coin was released, it was mined. So let's look here. DAG Labs founded in 2018, backed by Polychain and Genesis Mining Investments of around $8 million to implement Ghost DAG protocol to an open source code of the coin and develop an optical ASIC mining devices for that coin. So optical ASICs are a thing that's probably around the corner for a lot of cryptocurrencies that are proof of work that have ASICs. Optical ASICs are just a more efficient way of hashing because it uses light instead of the electrical current between the chips and everything in the architecture. By mid-2021, it was decided there was no sense continuing the funding and development since the optical ICs are not ready for factory grade implementation. And in general, the interest in proof of work coins is ceased in the crypto sphere. So by the agreed decision of Polychain and DAG Labs, the project is henceforth stated as owned by the community. So this is where it comes into Casper coin, basically. While DAG Labs and Polychain waive any intellectual property rights. By the start of the mainnet in November 2021, DAG Labs still exists but had half sleeping mode, supporting several developers on a part-time basis and waiting for the mainnet launch. After the launch of DAG Labs starts mining on common grounds. So this is the main thing that we want to talk about after the launch, DAG Labs starts mining on common ground. So this means that anyone could have mined on Casper coin if they found it at the start of the coin. This is what common grounds means. So they obviously knew about the coin and a lot of people surrounding this coin, Casper coin, know about the coin. So obviously they're going to start mining on it if they believe in the technology and you need some sort of hash rate on the coin to upkeep the network, I guess. This happened with Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin's founder, Satoshi Nakamoto, has 5% of the supply. So he obviously mined Bitcoin before anyone else had mined it, if that makes sense. And he just put them into several different wallets, which is basically what DAG Labs did here. Slowly spending the remains of the initial funding, so the 8 million, to mine Casper on a rented Amazon HW. By late December, the GPU miner is written by the community member Haunted Cook and then later also in cooperation with Demi Israel. So DAG Lab switches to another type of rental HW. So I believe that this is from CPU mining into GPU mining, and then mining on rented facilities lasts for about five months, after which the finances are fully exhausted. So this basically means that they were probably funding the developers for a lot of money between 2018 and mid 2021. And then when it came onto the mainnet, they basically just rented out rigs for CPU mining using this $8 million investment. And then they rented out GPU mining rigs 
for the remainder of whatever was left on the $8 million investment. Subsequently, they mined a certain amount of coins, but this is also on common ground, so they had the money to mine it. But once the finances were fully exhausted, they stopped mining it. These mined coins, in the amount of no more than 3% of the total supply, are shared between investors at Polychain and the former employees' advisors of DAG Labs in some proportion. So this could include uh, the team in DAG Labs, which would be some of the developers that are still working on Casper Coin right now. So they could have got a share of that. And then it lastly says here, DAG Labs is officially closed after that, took some time to dissolve a legal entity, wasn't operational at all during that time. And we can actually see this here. I don't know how up to date these kind of websites are, but it says here founded in 2017, DAG Labs. And then if you scroll down here, it was actually out of business officially on the 1st of March, 2023. Now I don't know if that is a reliable date, but as it says here, DAG Labs was officially closed after the proportions were like divided out, but it just took time to dissolve it as a legal entity. So they weren't actually doing anything with it. Now it says here less than 3% of the total supply. So we're looking at 840 million Casper coin. And then it's a link to a discord. So this is actually up in the discord. You just have to scroll very far back down to 2022. And it just talks about how much do DAG Labs and Polychain control and if they're gonna be selling it basically. So then Yonatan answers the question up here and then it talks about some of it being at some point everyone needs to hey go the DL issue as in DAG Labs but this is because people would be saying it's not a fair launch because DAG Labs was the creators so they shouldn't be mining on the actual coin. However it is fair launch so anyone that was involved in DAG Labs and had knowledge of Casper coin was liable to basically mine it as soon as Casper Coin Network went online to the mainnet. And it also says there, there's nothing we can do about it and this is now a community project and we must make it happen and succeed. So yes, DAG Labs does have a significant amount of Casper Coin. So does Polychain, I am assuming. Now I was looking at addresses and they did mention 840 million of the Casper Coin was divided up between addresses. So I don't actually think we could ever find the addresses, but this is the top 1000 addresses and most of these are exchange wallets. However, these two right here, as we open them up, have zero transactions in them. I don't know how they have zero transactions in them. Like you can't see any transactions sent into these wallets. So I don't know how the actual chain made this happen or why these addresses are here. But I'm assuming that maybe some of these top addresses are the ones that were allocated outwards to the either Polychain or the DAG Labs team. And obviously a load of the developers have probably sizable wallets, I would assume just because they were in on it at the start. Now, if you really wanted to find out, you'd have to scroll back on the Casper Explorer to the first block, look at the block hash. So we'd have to find the first block ever, look at the hash and then see it in the Casper Explorer to see where the actual Casper coin was allocated. Now that would take me ages to actually find that because you can't look further back without going on the whole graph inspector. And as you see there, there's 53 million that we'd have to go back and you can't actually just like quickly scroll back. You have to click on each of one of them to keep going backwards, if that makes sense. So somebody could do it if they had the time, or if you just had an auto clicker that auto clicked it every two seconds until you got to the first block. I'm assuming that nobody's really gonna do that and do that much investigation. But I just thought that that was interesting that these had zero transaction counts. I don't know how that is possible on the actual network, maybe because it was mined from a node at the start or something like that. And then here is also another address, but you can see that there are transaction accounts in here. So this is like a whale, I guess. Some of the wallets already recognized as we see back here, MEXC wallet, KuCoin, Gate.io, TXBit, CoinEx, uh, BitGet wallet, Rust Fund, so Rust funding might have some from the developers and some from the community, which actually has a lot of Casper coin in it. And they normally do community votes on where they want to allocate this. So you can keep an eye on the wallets and how much Casper coin is being allocated, whichever way they want to do it. But for the most part, I just wanted to clear up that DAG Labs did obviously mine at the start of the coin. It's still fair launched because there was no pre-allocations into any blocks or anything like that. 
It was Common Ground launched, so anyone could have mined at that point. Anyone with a sizable amount of GPUs could have jumped on the Casper network and mined as much coins as they wanted. They could have bought as much coins as they wanted, depending on if it was on an exchange or not. I don't know what the first exchange was for Casper coin, but it was probably pretty early on that they got it onto an exchange. And then lastly, we see here the address distribution. So there used to be one with 1 billion, and I believe that, that was MEXC. As you can see now, they've gone below that. But there's nine in the range of 100 million to 1 billion. There's around 200 from 10 million to 100 million. And then as we go down, obviously it gets bigger. So this uh, up here is how many Casper addresses there are. Now, obviously people could have two, three, four addresses. I even have multiple addresses for Casper coin, like I have multiple wallets. So this could be skewing some of the counts. Like say I had 100K Casper coin, but it was all spread out between these type of three wallets. We take away from these numbers and we'll consolidate into this fish uh, bracket of Casper coin. It was, so overall Casper coin was fair launched. I just wanted to clear that up with the community. If you have any comments or if you have any rebuttal to this, I guess if you've done more research into maybe the first addresses of Casper coin, and if I've missed anything, please let me know as well, because then we can, because then we can come back and I'll pin the comment if I've missed anything. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel for more Casper content. And don't forget to watch all the other Casper coin videos on the channel.